I want to thank everyone for being here. I'm so honored to be here talking to you today. I know it's not easy to make the time for this event at this difficult time. My name is Marsh Chen. Today, I'm going to talk about my time researching common philosophy in ICS protocols. Everyone should know that modern hackers love to target ICS and disrupt of or take control of ICS SCADA system. Many of you will already have background knowledge about ICS and SCADA, and even have familiarity with many real-world ICS threads. I will still do my best to keep this material as relatable as possible. And um, now, I work for TX1 Networks. TX1 is a joint venture company by Trent Michael and Bossa. And fo we focus on providing cyber defense and visibility for operational technology networks. You can see, Trent Micro has 30 years security knowledge in high-speed DPI technology, and is a world leader in three research. While Mossa has 31 years of OT knowledge in ICS infrastructure and protocols. So we combine the cybersecurity and OT knowledge. That is TX1. Okay. And at TX1, I'm the three researcher focused on ICS and SCADA security research. At the same time, I will also work with web application, mobile apps, IoT devices, and ICS SCADA penetration testing. I have shared my research at conferences such as ICS Subsecurity Conference USA and Asia, Hacking Taiwan Conference, HECOM, and Hacking the Box Conference, Hacking HITB. And I also, I'm also an instructor of, for the Ministry of Education and Ministry of National Defense in Taiwan, which of course include IOC, Hacking Skill, and ICS Security. And my partner, Selman, Selman is an ICS Neo protocol expert. He focuses on protocol processing and Linux program, uh, kernel programming. And this is today's outline. I will start with ICS architecture and attack vectors, and then talk about how communication protocol works and what security risk in the ICS environment. And finally, I will share a mitigation strategy for working against ICS network protocol attacks. So first one, ICS architecture and attacker vectors. This is Pudu model, and which was developed in the 1990s. This architecture was adopted by ICS 99 standard previously. And how we code it? Now we code it IEC 62443. And Pudu model has six layers. Number, number zero to five. And level zero to level three. Level zero to level three. We call it OT or operational technology layers. And while level four to level five, we call it IT. We call it IT layer. And usually in level zero, in level zero, the process layer, which consists of the sensor or actuate. And in level one, you will see the RTU, IPOC, or IET kinds of controller will be put in this, this layer. And in level two, you will see the local HMI, well, you will see a local SCADA in area supervisory control layer. And in level three, you will see many engineering workstation, server, Eastern, we are putting it here. And totally, from level zero to level three, we combine the OT. And if we dive into the ICS architecture, you will find this common ICS architecture. And this slide shows the common ICS architecture. The composition of ICS contains HMI, field controller, field devices, and some of safety system, and kinds of server and engineering workstation. Combine a minimal ICS environment ICS systems. And HMI, usually we call this human machine interface, usually have two phones. One is touch panel, and like we see in this picture, like in here, that is touch panel based, and the other is software based, and which usually loaded onto the Windows computer. And HMI provides a geographical representation of process for the operator, and can be used for control, monitoring, learning, and training. And field devices are the things such as the meters or for pressure, temperature, liquid flow, gas flow, and so on. And different types of factory will use different field devices. And however, in IC, common ICS architecture, there are many attack vectors, including web attacks, different kinds of server attacks, software attacks, physical attacks on field devices, or wireless 
attacks, including DB, 4G, and some radio frequency. Of course, our focus today is also included ISIS network protocol attacks. And before we talk about this, let me review this, like a look at how serial of ICS security, ICS threats. And this, this two package is uh, advisory from ICS threat in the left side. And we will see, um, ICS threat is a national agency owned by United States government, which focuses on the ICS security issue. And we can see that the number here, the number of the advisory is rising year by year. Yeah, but however, seeing this number advisory, we cannot get an evaluator of the severity because each advisory maybe have many, many vulnerability will included will be included in one advisory. So we will use the CVSS to a common vulnerability scoring system to take another look of the same data. And in the right side, in the right side, we we will use different um, vulnerability type like CWE 119 is very very high very, very much number in the ICS environment, ICS and cybersecurity, in probability of the um, registration of the operation within the bond of the memory buffer. So many ICS vulnerabilities about this time. So also here we use the CVSS is used to evaluate the vulnerability severity. And CVSS have two type. One is 2.0, the other is 3.0. And according to 2.0, vulnerability severity is di in diverting to three le risk level: high, medium, and low. And 39% of vulnerabilities are ranked at high risk level. And with CVS 3.0, there are four, four um, risk level. One is critical, the other high, medium, and low. And uh, 80% of vulnerabilities are rated as a critical risk level, and 34% of high of, of vulnerabilities are in a high risk level, which means those vulnerabilities may be easy for hackers to exploit. So it's a very serious thing. It's a very serious thing because hackers can easily to use these vulnerabilities to compromise ICS environment or systems. Okay, so here we use the ICS attack matrix to analyze past ICS incident. We can see analysis of the Starnet in 2010, Industry in, in 2016, or Triton in 2017 in the ICS attack matrix website. And this way, we can use a common language to explain what happened. For operator, for cybersecurity expert, for everyone, we can use a common language to explain one security incident. So for example, by, comp by comparing the standard here, um, we can see that the attacker compromised the engineering workstation and use the removable media to do the initial access to grant the initial access. Also, you can clearly see the which technique, which item, which technique, monitor process data, program upload, or rookie the program download, kinds of technique used it in this event. And finally, I make kinds of impact like uh, manip manipulation of control, manipulation of a view in here. So it's a common language provide everyone. Everyone know what happened in Sunnet or what happened in the industry or make some impact or how to do the impact process control in this event. It's a common language. So in this, like it's Triton, Triton is a very, very, very famous event incident and also everyone can see this incident and the key advantage of use my ISS matrix is that everyone can clearly communication about what technique tactics or procedures used by hackers is very easy to understand also let we take a look at ISS Q3 situation and now we know ISIS vulnerabilities are most operating at critical and high risk levels, which hackers can easily exploit. And the number of the vulnerabilities is rising year by year, where more and more attacks are working to exploit ICS vulnerabilities. And security assets often have a huge, make a huge impact. And ICS secure and scale are not secure at all. And as a report, the proposal has mentioned 71% of sites are still using obsolete Windows systems such as Windows XP or Windows 7. 
Well, 27% of industrial sites had at least at least one direct connection to the public internet. So for these reasons, for reasons, we think ICS security ICS is in a critical status. So we need to take a, we need to focus on the security issue in ICS environment. And the uh, how ICS is important, and we talk about this ICS protocols, and why we talk about this? Because the critical cyber threat bring us today the focus point, industrial communication protocols, the core of industrial communication. And um, usually in the world of industrial control, taking over the communication protocol is incorporated to the mastering the entire control process. So different field will use different um, protocols like power industry usually will usually will use DMP3 or IC1114 or in process monitoring or process control they will use MOBAS, Siemens or some of Mitsubishi or private vendors protocols. So many protocols, but protocol is very important. So usually we will see here. Our architecture, we already see it, but we will talk about communication protocol usually used between HMI, between HMI and HMI network station or field devices. So usually HMI can send a control command to PLC to controller and controller will trigger, will do the um, field devices, do something process monitor, training and so on. And uh, if we can, if an attacker can successfully compromise or com use the ICS network protocol, they can take over the entire ICS systems. This is a very serious situation. We need to focus. So maybe you have question. How important in ICS? Yes, yeah, so we take some country samples to look at this. In Taiwan, there are eight critical infrastructure centers. So at least four traffic, high tech park energy or medical. Or maybe some little communication will use ICS network to control and monitor process. So in Singapore, there are 11 CI centers also. At least six use ICS network protocol to control process aviation, water, transport, healthcare, energy. And in Japan, 40 CI centers, at least nine CI centers will use ICS network protocol. United States, 16, and at least 10. So how important of ICS network protocols? We talk about four countries, and most countries, they use ICS network protocol to control the in critical infrastructure for state facilities. So if those facilities, those centers are compromised, the, the impact will be huge and very serious. Maybe he impact him human's life, human's property, and we need to focus on this. So here is our introduction. And that's why we will talk about public and private ICS network protocols. Okay, now we will talk about public and private ICS network protocols. So why public and private and what's the difference? So for public protocols we can use usually find detailed specifications on the internet on the internet in other words attacks can easily easily to become familiar with the contents of these protocols and this is a high chance they can write exploit code because they can very easy to research those protocols like a model bus dmp3 or ethernet ip specifications and it find a way to write exploit code and about the private protocols on the other hand, um, on the, uh, are developed, on the developed and defined by various, various, uh, various uh, industrial control vendors. Basically, the contents of and the specification of the protocols will not be disclosed to the public. It was mean that attacks usually have to use time consuming reverse engineering or network protocol analysis if they want to write this boy code. So it's very time consuming things if they want to perform kinds of attack. On private protocols like Omron Things, Mitsubishi, Siemens S7. And now we will also, they, will, they are highly available. I'm, I'm sorry to say that the specification of the open protocols about the public protocol are very painful to read. For example, the simplest model bus protocol 
have 41, 50, sorry, 51 pages and of reading, related reading. And Eastern IP Volume 2 has 355 pages. The MP3 has 821 pages, but Eastern IP and IP Volume 1 have more than 15 hundred pages so when you see those specifications it is really a oh my god type situation it's really really spent you need to see us you still need to spend many many time to read those documents to understand what protocol how to work and try to write its protocol and try to attack poc or hmi and now Next, we will analyze the handshake and the contents of seven communication protocols, which are including four public and three private protocols. And in this part, we will not talk about content in too much detail because each protocol has its own features and there is not enough time. And so we talk about now we talk about Monobus handshake and HMI and PLC. And Monobus is a very simple protocol, also simple, but it is used by many manufacturing. In any communication, there can be only one request and one response. So no request, no response. So for this protocol, attacker just need to know where the function code and the request data. They can try to attack function call and request data. They can try to perform kinds of attack. So as more of us was fairly early protocols, the engineers who decided it did not consider consider it a security issue during its creation. No CRC, no TCP server handshake. So as you can see here, request while well, it's a plain test, you will see a real holding register and just the address word count and about the response you will see all all of them as data and register registers so in this picture the address and the data are not encrypted by hmi or plc They're just plain test it's very it's a very serious issue if we i'm hacker i can it's already you know information leakage so eastern ip is one eastern ip cip is related com complicated there um here we have three receiver handshake and um, set up from message one to message three and message four to message five they will you know um register uh, a session in C in, in uh Ethernet IP to re register session request and response and you will you will see the um header and the architecture in here this real friend an option the command specific data and uh, architecture over the like a uh, OSI 7 model OSI layer 7 model yeah and in the C in the message 6 and 7 we will use a send control message and on the right side CIP over ESN IP provided many use 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 making CIV unable for things such as data management service or motion service motion control and the end of the communication, the protocol will send the unregistered request and response. So end of the entire session. So this is uh, this is Ethernet IP CIP handshake process. But however, also CI also CIP provide many and more functions than Modbus TCP. But it still was not developed with consideration of security issues. Here you can see what function and data are used, like get attribute, star, and stop. So well, you can see here get attribute list. It's very easy to read, and it's already used so for privacy point of view. This is already kind of leak information leakage. So hacker can tra sniff this traffic and can know all oh, what the communication between the HMI and POC. It's very easy things. So. Which can release information leakage can provide attacker with a basis of a full more fuller information gathering. So attacker can observe what attack methods are used in those communications and which virus can um, be assessed. So the subsequent attack can be successful. Here in this picture, you can see the communication of CIP connection management managers, um, which is related more complicated than more bus, like a many header, kind of network connection, original vendor, serial number, uh, many, many attribute well deployed, well used in the Ethernet IP, CIP traffic. So, but of course, 
it is necessary to know clearly、um, the field is represent before performing attack. If we want to perform attack before, because as a hacker, you need to know which phone and、uh, which which content which byte well you can make the impact with the, these protocols. So you need to first know this, and also DMP three. The other pro- the other public protocol and widely used in the f- power power industry.、Um, here we will use、uh, not use PLC. In here we use the outstation because based on the DMP three, usually they will use the HMI or you know、uh, HI and the outstation communication. So this is very simple protocol. But DMP three enhancement、uh, in, in, in emphasize the time securitization more than other protocols because it's the,、uh, for power industry. They focus on time securitizations and the data link layer and application cross in DMP3 protocol have a CRC, but they can easy to calculate and it in fact I cannot protect the data integrate. So here you will see、uh, from message four to message five DMP3 request and response, you will see the CRC, but the CRC cannot actually cannot protect the entire connection and cannot protect the data integrate. So in this example, we want to read the content of the file. So here you will see our function code is read. Also, the MP3 have many many type, many、um, content, many byte, many friend friends. But we need to uh you know type type into if we want want to perform kinds of attack. And you can see the um actual response is not required encrypted. So each your response is plain text in the this protocol for power industry. Also. The MP3 is very special protocol because they support the other mode and decide for this 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 design is for the MP3 allow the slave in the here slave we mentioned is about we point out the outstation it means outstation a slave can send a response to the HMI in some specific specific situations and this does not protect the message contact so from outstation they can do the um. Response emergency response to the、um, HMI and folks in the in this moment such as design create high risk that we can execute the spoofing for HMI because DMP3 just will send the com- confirm HMI will send a confirm message to the outstation. So as a hacker, I can spoofing for HMI send is a response and HMI will show this message on the screen. So operator. Maybe will be cheated by the attack and make the wrong decisions. So also, we will provide some kinds of demo later. And the last private public protocols is also a protocol widely used in the power industry, electricity. And before the start of communication, the IEC one o four handshake will be conducted, and it's before TCP three hundred handshake. And、uh, this um start and stopped、uh, IEC handshake. This handshake, and after that. Will do the、um, control command monitor request and response, and here you will see also many you know header content in IEC one o four. So the do the English ah、uh, header different header, but we not deep into this、um, content because we don't have enough time. But in the example, we send this traffic here. You will see our start action action and.、Uh, Confirm message. Just make sure the connection channel is opened. Is good.、Uh, traffic is okay. It's it's okay for、um, the HMI and RTU to communication each other. And then IEC one o four. IEC one o four provide kinds of um um yeah control and monitor request. So also you will see in the here the end message command. And the response often are plain test passwords, so or, or often are plain test. So of course there are no security, including the design. But however, you will find one thing: they are have start action and confirm, but then they don't have stop action and confirm. So it's a really very、um, feature of IEC one one four handshake. And as present, as present, we know that IEC one four support many over sixteen functions, a few of which are listed in for reference. So as a hacker, if I want to research and I want to attack IEC one four protocol, I will do this research this function list and try to perform kinds of attack. And 
than Omro things and private protocols. And we will talk about some your private protocol like uh Mitsubishi, uh Mitsubishi, uh Omron, Siemens, we will talk about this. And the things protocol will first come from the address at the beginning of the communication. So they conduct formal communication similar mode bus. TCP string will handshake but the mobile will allow this. And the thing, um, things not address address X and Y and will do the real things request and the response. So also it's very similar like a mode bus part is you just need to know the request command and data you can control with and take over the Omron things protocol. So it's very easy to understand it. Just you need to create a things TCP header, things header, things friend. You can successfully compromise the uh, things com protocols. So similar, the design have no encrypt security. So in the each traffic, each communication, you will see um, address sent or uh, um, feedback response um, request. Response, you will see all of them are the plan test password for system use or every information are plan test. So no inclusion and also no authorization and authority authorization. So it's very weak protocol. Even they are private protocol. And this one and same as S7. And this protocol is very popular and most often studied. It is also the most complicated uh, protocol we are looking at today. Why? Because Siemens S7 improvement, improved layer, their own protocol many times and provided many versions. So this is basic uh, protocol we talk about S7. Also, through a handshake and then a COTP connection and um, message six to seven will perform the um, setup communication request and response to the setup uh, build the channel for Siemens S7 protocol, and then real Siemens S7 request and re response. So here you will see wow S7 communication header parameter data well put in here. So when before we send a real uh, Siemens S7 packet to attack, we need to do TPKT. We, we need to fake a TPKT header, COTP and SH, S7 communication protocol header. And then in the S7, they will do the TCP four-way connection close. And then we talk about the sample. So in this sample, um, it's very easy to understand because just, you know, MCR connection request and uh, CC connection confirm, just want to make sure the channel build and for COTP and LAN TKT and LAN and set up a communication request for the uh, COTP and S7 communication. So here already is uh, S7 communication. So you just want to set up the communication request, then set up a response. In this moment, the chain already built, already successfully to, to, to build. And so HMI can, and POC can communicate each other with the real parameter data in here. So we can send, HMI can send the Siemens S, S7 request here. So you will see, oh, here is Palantas. So also even S7 protocol, they're very, very complicated, but they still not encrypt any information in this initial version. Okay. And then we talk about after S7 protocol, Siemens S7 plus, um, Hoping to um, improve the security of the protocol, so there has been a consideration change in the handshake process of the protocol. So in S7 Plus, there is a basic no way of obtaining information related to transmission of data or on the, fo on the function code used. So of course, after starting is encryption method, it is can crack another attack path to identify the attack. So in the our on this handshake process, you will find things. Um, all of them will be, you know, just some TCP handshake or um, first one and first time at seven connection, or will be here like connection response with object ID and value array. So in here, still not real transmission at seven plus protocol data, but but. After message seven, they will do this 
to do the connection request with session ID and key block and the send it and get a response. And in this moment, they will do the、uh, encryption handshake actually. So they will do real a seven plus request with integrated part. So here you will find the packet the data will be already be encrypted. So anyone, no one can retrieve the data, but and send the response also will you you will find just a、uh, encryption data will be put in here. But basically, basically. A seven plus has many many version. Like it's version one, version two, version one in the package version, protocol version, pack,、uh, version two here integrated part in here, and version three it is an independent, is independent in, in integrated part. So a seven has undergone several several highs,、um, many times improvement from version one to version three. So from version two to version three, lo the location of integrated part. And the way of encryption have also changed, but however, however, even though S seven plus will do will be do the many research by any hacker, malicious hacker, white hacker will do this research. So also, even is newest version three, still some vulnerabilities, some security flaws in those protocols. So we still can try to attack, even is a very even is already considered the cybersecurity issue in the protocol. So we still need to try to best to uh try to design a secure protocol for ICS, and here we have Mizvish Mailsec, the protocol and this protocol Wireshark cannot analyze Mizvish Mailsec traffic. You will see the only will see the、uh, TCP、um, protocol in, in, in this moment in in he in this. While check view, so we try to write a um rule of plugging so the washer can understanding can understand and it is more convenient for us to analyze. So here, yeah, in the left side is our rule of plugging, is our rule of plugging. In the right side, after our rule of plugging analyze, we can see different data and including request data number of the world access device number, device code, and so on many things. So, next picture, and so we we can after our analysis, we can easy to try to perform kinds of attack, or um you know analyze this because we want to if we want to perform attack, before this we need to get some information from a well shark. So it's a very similar handshake to the mobile bus. Also, no TCP handshake and send a request and response. So. Here you just just need to try to request data, then time request data, and、uh, you 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 can try to retrieve and you can try to take over Mitsubishi Mailsec protocol. So without authentication and encryption between HMI and the POC. So so well done, use protocol and no consider any cybersecurity issue. So we already get. It. We already review and、um, simple to discuss the four, seven protocol, including four public, three private protocols, and then we talk about common flaws in ICS network protocols. So here, here amongst of the seven protocol we analyze, only S seven have strong landed security, and the other protocols basically have no protection against the security issues, such as authentication or message encryption. Both are designed to achieve the best availabilities, and then what kinds of specific attack and impact will this cause? So, in here we will find different、um, protocol, public or private、um, handshake, handshake type or authentication message、uh, message encryption, but without authentication, without encryption, the impact. What is the impact of this? So. In the here, we will discuss this. Here is the table, and we map some techniques in ATTNC CAN matrix, which show us、um, that there will be a problem with those、um, communication protocol. And basically, the parameter of the seven protocol communication protocol we analyze can be modified, and they can be give an authority command message. And there are a lot of way to spoofing remote reporting message to HMI or download program from PLC or to PLC or upload program to PLC and the question marks.、Um, you know,、uh, some 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 parts still have a question mark 
Uh, but the least part and it, um, is about this. It does not mean that they will, will not be attacked by such technique. It is just that we have not confirmed it yet. So, whether it's the public or private, those communication protocol have very high security risk. Attacker can easily perform kinds of attack with lost technique, perform denial of service, perform a modified parameter, spoof reporting message, program download or sort unsort common message with lo- with lo- lost protocol and can make a huge impact. But what kind of impact will happen in the ICS environment? So still we map to the ICS attack matrix. Uh, so there are some metrics that I think the protocol may correspond to. So as well as the public public hospital impasse, we think in this metrics. So in this metrics, we can know um uh, the different type or the different you know here in this part um uh, in in uh, in hybrid response uh, function process control impact and what what will happen. So whatever it is to interrupt the operation. Of the control program, modify the perimeter, or damage physical equipment. So it's very difficult and serious things we need to focus on because if attack use those ICS protocol perform attack, then they can make huge impact on real ICS environment. It's it's very very difficult things. So we need to take next. I would like to demo some of our ideas about our, we talk a bit previously about the kinds of ISIS network protocol attack. And this is our TS1 ISIS library. And as you can see, many ISIS communication protocol are used in this lab, including Ethernet IP, Modbus, TCP, Siemens S7, and other some unknown protocols. And our, and our demo will demonstrate the red friends devices. So focus on Omron things, Modbus, TCP, Mitsubishi, the mail sack. And the first demo, we will demonstrate TA36, A36, modified parameter with Mitsubishi mail sack protocol. So here we show the video demos you will see here. Okay. And then we take a look at this video demo and to modify the parameter. And first, in this scenario, in normal status, every 30 seconds, the light will be changed. You can see mapping of the precision between HMI and the field devices. So here, M10 and N10. So every 30 seconds will change the light. So here is automatic setting. So now every 30 seconds, the light will be changed. So just wait a second and I speed up for this video. So every 30 seconds, you will see here the the light will be changed. Light will be changed. So as a malicious hacker do in this demo, I want to modify the perimeter attack. So we will use Mitsubishi mail sack protocol to perform our attack. So wait a second, and we will show the, our attack view to perform kinds of attack with the modified perimeter. And here we will see our attack view. We perform attack from 30 seconds to 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds, we will change the light and we, mo- we modify the perimeter to modify the control process. So in this scenario, our attack will from 30 seconds to 10 seconds to 2 seconds to 8 seconds and back to 30 seconds. And this, our, this attack demo is very similar like um, it's probably to use a star neck attack because the field devices cannot after high frequency switching, it suffers physical damage and cannot use anymore. So we may simulate this demo scenario for the star net. So every two seconds will change in this moment. So you will see every two seconds, just change, change, change the light. It's very quickly switching. So we will make the field devices damage in this scenario. So we will see here. So, in this demo, we, we use the Mitsubishi mail sack protocol to perform a modify perimeter. So, here you will see in the pack, in the wild shark view, we modify the um, traffic from 10 seconds, 2 seconds, 8 seconds, and 30 seconds we to the modify perimeter with our attack panel. This is our first demo. And second one, TH843. Uh, 
program download with Mitsubishi Mail Soft. And actually, this is a very special protocol I will never mention before. Uh, Mitsubishi Mail Soft is used to the communication with engineering workstation and PLC. It's a very special protocol. And uh, we will use this protocol to perform the program download. So also, we show the demo. So program download, and on the right side, our normal status, our the, the program, well, you, you will see he's running, and still running in the normal status. But as a hacker, as a malicious hacker, and when I connect to this PLC, I can touch this PLC, I will do the attack. I send the download command, we will download the entity, entity program to the PLC. And when we download the program to the PLC, we'll make this PLC to enter the start operation status. So we upload, upload, download a PLC program, upload a PLC program to the PLC, we'll make an error status and make the situation will be stopped. So we successfully impact the physical process by download the program to PLC. So it's very scenario. More advanced scenario will perform a download a real and can modify the control logic process. This means is we download the program to PLC and this PLC in this program can real execute in this PLC for the field devices. Maybe change the speed, maybe change the situation, or turn on or off the situation and so on. And also with our demo, second one demo. Okay. And then we talk about the other demo, spoof reporting message with Modbus TCP. And now this, this demo will based on watcher environment. So let me show this demo. Okay, based on this environment, you will see the PLC, HMI, PLC, HMI, watcher tank, and it's a normal status. So we'll keep operation only. Or running, running, and well, you know, you know, uh, value of the HMI will change. And then we perform the spoofing. And before we perform attack, we first, first we, we do the up spoofing to sniff the traffic between HMI and POC. And we want to know how to perform this attack. So we find a target of HMI and POC. And in this scenario, we only attack HMI. We only repair the wrong message, the wrong wrong number, wrong icon to the HMI. But the physical process will keep up strongly normally. So we spoof the reporting message to HMI. And after we perform the up spoofing, we open the well shock um, to make sure the traffic of a motor bus will go through our attacker, Kelly Linus. So make sure motor bus TCP traffic between already goes through our um, Kelly Linus. And then we upload, we, 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 we load a filter we pre, pre, pre create this. It's a focus on we modify the response to HMI. And you will find one thing is uh, our value of HMI will already be changed. And we perform successfully perform the spoofing reporting message. It says fast successfully. So this one demo. <laughs> and the last demo for our attack. It's authority command message with Omron things. And also it's a simple protocol. And also it's a private protocol. And let me show this demo. It's an authority command message. It's a very simple scenario. In this demo, you need to focus on the motor. PLC, HMI, we'll keep our region running, still running, running in normal status. And our attack send this command to from stop to stopped and for five seconds and keep running. So let me show this again. Here, still running, still running, and we send command and stopped. Five seconds and keep running. So this is our attack scenario for send out an authority command without uh, HMI, just from attack, can send command to PLC. So let's summarize this part. No authentication, no authorization, and no encryption, and part of a small part of stack overflow will lead to attacks. And these attacks 
include the commanding gesture. It's like it was just a uh, demand, just demand. Like a tier, uh, impact, kind of the impact of a modified per perimeter, spoof reporting message, and also the command message, and so on. So on. And then we will show you, finally, we will show you how to defend against the ICS network protocol attacks. It's a very important part because in ICS environment, you know attack is not enough. You need to know how to de against those attacks, how to defend, how to detect, and how to protect. So we will talk about this. And just to recap, a vulnerable OT environment, I say environment, and we focus on the insecure authentication and insecure protocols. So between HMI, Engine network station in this part. So it's very important things we need to focus because so many legacy devices need to a very weak list. So also we can bake some network solution to protect the ICS network protocol and to do some virtual patch like a virtual patch to secure our environment. So according to ICS strategy, we sum up to the five techniques to protect our ICS environment, virtual page and virtual page, uh, here virtual page, perimeter defense, memory expansion, endpoint and USB lockdown and network wireless thing, where you can provide prevent a 98% ICS incident. And about the remaining 2% is focused on the, um, you need to build a SOC, security operation centers for monitor and response. So next I will introduce how to implement the network wireless thing control for this talk because today we only focus on network wireless thing and virtual patch because the network base is a network base so we focus on it here. So first one, how to do perform a virtual patch and you need to uh, maybe use some devices to do virtual patch and do the uh, block some vulnerability, and traffic, uh, malicious traffic should be used to the uh, network site to prevent the loop hold or malicious traffic, like this virtual patch, like this, to do to deployment. Also, granular control over public, popular OT protocols. Of course, granular control is also necessary for the industrial control protocols themselves. We must be able to um, analyze kind of communication protocols and what control command and are transmit and wherever these control commands are allowed to be used and so on. So we strongly, we strongly recommend intent based segmentation and implement technology to give your granular control to filter, to do the network thing, to protect the mode of filter, the mode bus protocol, kinds of ICS network protocol and control command to make sure something else are read only, something can throw the SS and something can do, something cannot do this. So it's very important things because most of ISIS protocols, legacy protocols, so they don't have any security as they don't have a security in the design implement to the uh, protocol base. So we need to do in the network base to protect, to detect our OT protocol attacks. So here we do the network rising control against the same as S7 protocols. It's very, very important things and we will perform a short a demo but however, this demo is a scenario, a simulator base, we build a Siemens scenario, Siemens S7 scenario, and we perform the attack, and we show how to do the defense, detach and defense. So here is our scenario, and we don't know any security increment. So HMI, PLC, or our um, simple IPS view to, to do the protection, detection and protection, and attack view. So now we do the normal, uh, behavior operation between HMI and POC. <coughs> you will see here the traffic, and we make sure read and write from the PL our simulator, POC. <coughs> so it's normal behavior. Just read and write, and just check out our simulator is normally <coughs> here. And just speed up a little. Here to here, here. So I'll make sure our normal status, normal scenario is, is, is okay. And then we set up before we perform attack, we set up our, our rule for normal wireless thing and make sure some use some module to perform attack. We want to make sure our Siemens exploit attack 
So from PLC for S7, <coughs> it's great. So in this moment, we not enable any, we not enable any security without any security. We just set up target. We want to send command to the PLC. So we turn on this run here, run and stop. And we perform send command to two, two is stopped. So send it and PLC will from run to stopped. It successfully attack. It's a scenario. But however, if you want to start or stop, it's very easy because basically this protocol without any security design. And then <coughs> we will focus on <coughs> how to prevent, how to detect this. So here is the monitor mode. So monitor mode, we just enable our um, our network testing configuration for same as S7 and set up this and make sure um, only HMI, PLC, and for the um, actually deny, something deny, <coughs> and apply our configuration and perform attack again some attack again, and you will find one thing is uh, still work. Attack will still work, but however, however, um, you should have a capability to monitor the attack traffic. Because sometimes we know many, many ICS vendor, ICS factory or ICS operator, they're afraid of against any traffic in the ICS environment. So, but they want to see the traffic, what, thing, what happened in the ISIS environment? Oh, we perform attack something, attack perform this attack. We want to run and stop ISIS, uh, ISIS S7 protocol. And then we, we will try to perform attack again. We want to perform attack again, and here just quickly here to prevention mode. So we made this prevention. And we just block this prevention mode well, you know, every every malicious traffic will be blocked. It. So we can make sure our ISIS environment is, is protected and is secure. Even the protocol is weak, it's without any security, without authority, authorization, or encryption. So, but the protector will be useful for this network quality. We think it's very useful may had to protect a legacy ICS network protocol, and we should do that. So here, you will find the attack never already cannot successfully attack, and cannot get a real ride or stop or wrong, a PLC. So make sure our this network is useful, and we can successfully protect our environment. So basically, in this demo, we show how to protect Initially, to uh, just show how to protect, show how to monitor um, kinds of attack for about ISIS network protocol. So we need to protect this event because based on those protocol, widely using ICS system and lots of ICS system are widely using CS critical infrastructure status. So we need to protect it. We need to monitor it. It's very very important things. So I think we should keep is and make sure we can secure our ICS environment. So it is as my pleasure to share ring with you today and thank you for your time and thank you for your listen. So anything, if you have question, I'm welcome to contact me. Thank you.